John McIntyre. I'm a scientist consultant for ILRI. I'm working on co-editing a book on the historical impact of ILRI and its two predecessors, Ilka and Ilrad, along with Dr. Delia Grace and Hector Patel, whom you probably know. Uh, many years ago, I worked for one of ILRI's predecessors, ILCA, the International Livestock Center for Africa and Ethiopia, for five years. And before that, I had been a graduate student, among other things, working on the economics of rice production uh, near Segu in central Mali, which was historically one of ILCA's and ILRAD's, or near there was one of ILCA's and ILRAD's uh, field research sites. So long, long ago, uh, once upon a time, uh, I was doing a survey of rice production, as I said, near Segu in central Mali, and I was doing questionnaire on uh, how much land people had, how much labor they did, what they produced, how much, etc., who did what in the family. Uh, and I was approaching the difficult and delicate subject of livestock holdings. People don't want to tell what their livestock holdings are. They're afraid of taxation or confiscation or, or some other kind of problem. So, uh, but, you know, I was, you know, and I had been living in these villages for a while. I developed a certain degree of confidence, you know, with, with the people. They were used to this this crazy uh, white person running around asking all sorts of personal intrusive questions and measuring their fields and, uh, and so forth. So we got to the issue of pre-testing the questionnaire on livestock holdings. So uh, I assumed, I was 26 at the time, didn't know anything, that the livestock holdings were all by the men. So we're interviewing the male head of household, and these were typically extended households. So you would have an older man and his sons and his wife and their wives and their children. So you'd have at least three generations in most households, and they would be extended, and some of the households were as, were as many as 50 people. But I said, okay, I'm going to start with interviewing the head of household uh, and then work down to the other men. So uh, I, I pre-tested this in a few households, and I got to the end of one household, which was particularly large, and then what I would do is I would ask the questions and I would, write, I would show people what I was doing and the enumerator would show them what I was doing. He would explain to them just to make sure that this wasn't going to the tax authorities or anything. And I said, okay, thank you very much. And we're finished for the day. And then finally, and the women were sitting off in the corner. Finally, one of, them, one of the women said something to the, to the enumerator and, and he said, uh, whatever he said, I can't remember. And I said, so what's that about? And he said, he said, she wants to know why you didn't ask her about livestock. And, and I told her that, that you weren't asking the women. I said, well, do they have many livestock? And then they all start laughing. I said, of course they do. So that was my moment. Uh, well, this influence in many years of doing field surveys in, in African countries and in Latin American countries after that uh, have taught me that on this area and any division of labor, the division of assets, the division of responsibilities, the division of control and power, if you will, there's, there are no simple answers. I mean, African agriculture is by far the world's most complicated subject because just when you think you know something, you'll find some other stuff that you had no idea that existed, and certainly in the area of gender because it touches on, as I said, the division of labor, the division of responsibilities, the division of assets the uh, division of power and control within and between households. That, you know, you have to be very careful and thorough that you've asked all the right questions to the right people and not just ask one, bit, one question or set of questions to one person on the assumption that he knows what everybody else is doing and he has some adequate knowledge to respond intelligently or openly to whatever the question may be. Of course, this, this is particularly true in the area of gender but it's true in many other areas of agricultural service as well.